And so there you have it in one day, half a day, the Pakistan cricket team summed up perfectly from the utterly ridiculous to the ultimately sublime. But there's only one thing I would say. The only reason why this could happen is the thing we say in Urdu, Kudrat Ka Nizam. I've got Moin here with me. <laughs> Moin, what do you make of this fantastic slash ridiculous, I don't even know what other words to use, performance by Pakistan? On what My initial thought is this. As you can see, the celebrations at the back with the fireworks um, for <laughs> Pakistan's victory here in London. I'm joking. No, it's, it's Guy Fox night. Um, look, I've just come to the conclusion that analyzing this team is, is, is fruitless. There is nothing you can say that in any way rationalizes what you see. I mean, and, and you know, to the point where it doesn't make any sense anymore. The only thing you can do after is just pull some fireworks in the background. Look, I'm wearing the Pakistan jersey. I have a funny feeling I won't perhaps get a chance to celebrate again, given we need so many things to go our way in the next week. So I thought, let me just take the chance and wear this. But wow, huh? I mean, uh, for all those who don't know, we live in London, so this involved about waking up at 5 a.m., and just when you thought that was the worst decision on the planet, things just come together. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it, it, fantastic. Uh, it wasn't Pakistan against New Zealand. It was New Zealand against Fakhar Zaman. Okay. Yeah. That's like, let's just say it. It was one man who got us out of jail. Okay. Then the other 10 people, barring Barbara Aza, maybe because he batted and Vaseem. Over, and Vaseem, fair enough. Okay, the eight people, it's like Sri Lanka game, right? Yeah. Eight people did not show up, okay? And I was going to paper over all the cracks and all, but really, Fakhar Zaman bailed you out. That, just that bowling performance was something we're going to talk about uh, in quite a bit of detail, I'm sure. Speaking of Fakhar Zaman, let's just get, get the, uh, address the elephant in the room. I mean, we've been saying it for the past 10 episodes <laughs> that Fakhar Zaman has been the missing link in Pakistan's team. <laughs> we, need to, we need to get him in. <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe maybe something contrary to that. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, to our yeah, viewers, you know, ch- check out our previous videos to see what, what we had to say on Fakhar Zaman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but look, I, I, I'll just touch on it, right? I mean, we still maintain that Fakhar Zaman getting dropped at the time he was dropped was the right move because the time away from the middle helped him. Fakhar himself said it. And we've seen it time and again. I mean, if you have that string of really low scores against low quality opposition, it just meant that it had to happen. It, it was a shame the drop didn't happen sooner because then we might have seen him back in action sooner, right? Um, and the other point is if we hadn't dropped him, we wouldn't have found Abdullah Shafiq, who won us the game in Sri Lanka and has been an unsung hero in this campaign. I think our bigger issue, mistake, was we took Imam ul Haq for granted when that clearly was wrong. I think he was, he was doing the typical Imam thing, just doing the bare minimum to make it in, getting a 70 against Australia, 30 against India, just enough to secure his place for the next match, which finally had to um, give way, but... Look, anyways, I mean, it's uh, maybe a little too late for Pakistan, Pakistan's hopes, but still, fingers crossed, there are there is a chance. But let's get into the game a little bit more. Well, let's start from the beginning. Pakistan won the toss, decided to field first. For all, for all the criticism that we've given Babar Azam, in the end, this turned out to be the right choice. Right call. Taking everything into account, the fact that the pitch, the ground, the conditions, the fact that there was going to be rain. We were not very confident uh, when New Zealand was smashing the ball all over the park. But I think this was, this was the one time where you looked at the conditions, forecast, with rain forecasted. In the end, it paid off, paid, paid off and, and was the right choice, despite whatever we, we thought. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I thought uh, and uh, in our previous video, we both agreed that chasing is probably the best option given the rain around and the fact that Janiswami is smaller grounds, right? Um, I think it was less about the toss and more about the, the poor execution of bowlers that needed, you know, addressing. So um, I received a few messages at halftime saying we were wrong about that call and how crazy it was to bat uh, to bowl first but 
I think it paid off, right? I mean, I think you, uh, uh, Mickey Arthur even said in the the day before he had given a clue when he said we've taken all factors into consideration. Only thing he can mean by that is the rain, yeah. and also the fact that New Zealand have a bowling attack that suffered through injury. So can they win yeah. them the game by defending a total at the Chinnaswamy? Was yeah. perhaps tough. Now, if you told Barber the day the day before the toss that actually if you choose to bowl first you will concede 400 i guarantee you he will change his mind yeah <laughs> but yeah, but, yeah they, it's just a matter of poor execution i mean the fact that you went with four fast bowlers maybe early morning game so you might have some moisture in the, in, in, in the wicket which you can try and uh, utilize obviously there was zero signs of that given how toothless pakistan's bowling was um but, yeah. You know, it's a it's a tough one, right? The four fast bowlers because I can understand the merit because your spinners have just been awful and you've gone through a yeah. merry-go-round of getting spinners in and out. I get it, but look, you're I don't care whether you're playing in Bangalore. You're still playing in India. You're not playing in Auckland. You're not playing at the Oval. Yeah. You should have a spinner in, right? Like you know, because yeah. it just risks the the attack being one dimensional but it wasn't as bad a decision as new zealand's decision to only have two fast bowlers yeah. and four spinners right i mean yeah. I, and, he, and and they went by pakistan's weakness against spin batting yeah. against spin fine yeah. but the issue is when you've got only two fast bowlers you have nowhere to hide if one of them doesn't fire bolt yeah. did not fire you ended up having to go to daryl mitchell who i'm surprised didn't come on sooner given how awful we are against medium pace bowling right <laughs> we gave him three yeah. dots at the end <laughs> you know yeah I mean, go, going back to your point on on pakistan's fast bowlers yeah. um i think <laughs> a, a, the fact is none of the, th the four fast bowlers have been exceptional Shaheen's stats are flattering to say the least. Uh, Vaseem has been good when he's come back, but none of them we'd say have taken the you know the tournament by storm. So I think it was for them, it was just a case of probability where at least they would hope that one of those four will fire. Vaseem sort of did, but the rest were so ridiculously bad that you ended up conceding 400. And despite the fact that you had four fast bowlers, you still had to end up going to an off spinner. <laughs> In the, in the fifth or sixth over, so I really don't well, I get. I don't know. Is it fourth over? Nick, yeah, fourth, fifth yeah, over. Yeah, fifth over. It, crazy. It was crazy. I mean, I thought one of the reasons is that yeah, you know, you don't have a new ball bowler. Yeah. But <laughs> what you tried Asan Ali for two overs? Is that why he's in the team? Exactly. I mean, and I mean, at the end of the day, it also goes down to execution. The bowling was so poor. So many balls on on the pads. I've never seen wides. Uh, I think we got a bit lucky as well in the beginning. The first couple of overs, you didn't get up to a flyer in the first two, three overs. But after that, literally, again, I think it was a rec world, world record today again. Most fours conceded in a World Cup game, 46, uh, let alone all the sixes. Multiple records, actually. Zraharis Raf bro broke Hassan Ali's <laughs> record of worst figures by a Pakistani bowler in a World Cup. Only yeah. for that record to be broken three overs later by Shaheen Afridi. This, I mean, you know, this, like, and, and just before people say, oh, Shaheen, number one bowler, better than Bumrah. I mean, I think this puts it to bed, okay? Exactly. And the one slight point I'll mention is, you talked about Chinnaswamy or, you know, and, and, and I think there was mention about the pitch and the ground not being conducive to yeah. spin due to shorter boundaries. Need I remind you that in the last game against Australia, your best bowler was Iftikhar Ahmed, followed shortly by... Uh, by Nawaz, right? Osama went for many, many runs. It was his first yeah. game. He dropped a catch. And who ended up being their best bowler on the other end? Adam Zanta. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> right? So if you actually look at it, it isn't a fast bowler's paradise, right? But in any case, I thought Babar Azam wasn't quite sure. He thought if Tikhar would come in as a matchup with Devon Conway, who plays spin yeah. brilliantly, it looked a bit weird, right? And yeah. I think I'm so glad Ian Bishop has been watching our podcasts, right? Because he <laughs> made the point on how constructing four over spells in T20s are so different to constructing mm -hmm. 10 over spells. And that's how, and that's what it is. You've got T20 bowlers. Yeah, I mean, you just can't bowl the, the, the right length consistently. Uh, and that's cost, cost Pakistan. Look, anyways, at the end of the day, uh, again, very average bowling performance, but got over the line. Uh, Again, thanks to magical performance by by Fakhar Zaman. Um, what? Okay, so it is half time. You've Pakistan can see a 400 runs. 
what were you thinking then <laughs> i was just looking at all my memes because the meme game was so strong you know it'll yeah. be another case of, oh 350 say you know we stopped oh yeah. we stopped them before 450 you know and yeah look at, at the time i was i'll i'll be honest with you right i had a funny feeling that rain may come into play and i just hoped that pakistan were alert enough and not do their usual uh, thing of keeping wickets in hand and yeah. sometimes when you're chasing 400 or something crazy as that it brings yeah. clarity into the mind because you know there's only yeah. one way you can play and sometimes yeah. it's the confusion and yeah. the doubt that creates mistakes and wickets yeah. here it was flat for day when abdullah shafi got out that that upset me because i thought abdullah yeah. shafi's been very good i think he had come out playing not his natural game trying to hit every ball it was a bit immature yeah. which i give it but part of me felt that babar azam in early may actually help babar yeah. only because he can play in the power play and get those boundaries yeah. flowing and and it worked like yeah. so it well, went from complete depression to yeah. complete yeah. elation and you you notice i i was still not being over the top because i didn't want to jinx it yeah but man when because you knew i mean look deep down inside we knew if fakhar zaman goes that's it right so <laughs> like there's we... nothing that nothing can happen right and they got to a point where and you know in this 15 16 over there were a few overs strung together by the other side because yeah. babar azam wasn't getting the boundary yeah. and scored a boundary in so long i was scared we'll fall short yeah. and then that fakhar zaman over before the break to get us yeah. over the and then the ish so the over after just Not to time. put anything to but bed you know i think yeah just on that point i think it, that was very un pakistan like a very un fakhar zaman like also that over 14 15 where glen phillips bowled a maiden to him he batted it out he didn't play a stupid shot in that over he watched him and there were a couple of overs after that where which went for two or three which again when you're chasing 400 it's very easy to get agitated and hit a stupid shot but he didn't succumb to that and that is really hardening to see in someone like fakhar zaman who's been known to lose his patience after a while so just to stay calm and and not play a silly shot to watch that uh, those couple of overs through very mature um, babar azam i still i mean the cynic in me is still not fully convinced especially when he started off he was 20 or 15 and he ended up being 30 of 36 37 uh, i think he needs to it, it, and he's done this regularly where he just stops for 20 25 balls doesn't hit a boundary once he set so i think he needs to improve that again in in, in, in you know if if i'm net picking he i would really end up with 66 of 63 because he accelerated at the end he could have easily been 80 of 65 or something like that if he really pushed yeah. it yeah um, and, and and let's unpick that right for a second because what happens what tends to happen is two things one is the power play ends right yeah. and then the second thing is spinners come on right mm-hmm. so the the combination of these two things means boundaries dry up now babar will perhaps argue and defend himself by saying i was just giving the strike to fakhar which fair enough but i think he by his own admission will will um accept that there were a number of freebies that he did not pierce the gaps for and he's a better player than that right he was still better he still had more intent than previously but you know i remember there were at least like three four bad balls at glen phillips issue the ball yeah. to him that he didn't and he was visibly upset after he yeah. missed them right so he knows he knows it yeah. um but yeah it, it just goes into a shell a little i just think sometimes after the 10 over mark hitting yeah. those piercing the gaps is no longer enough right because you need to hit with a bit more power and you need to be able to rotate strike more right yeah. and i, I think it's, it's very good i think it's all about the strike rotation i mean you Look, the one thing they did really well, which I've been critical of, of the first ball he faced of Mitch Shatner, that short of a length ball from a spinner, he went on his back right. foot and smashed it over a cow corner. Which is which a I, shot I, he's got out on. Yeah, exactly. And this time he cleared the boundary p- pretty easily. So well done for that. But he did get stuck. And look, and that's where I think he can learn from someone like a Rachin Ravindra or Kane Williamson, who are phenomenal. The way they were, I mean, Kane Williamson played at, at a strike rate of over like one thirty, one four, right? One twenty, one thirty. That's not a big Kane Williamson type innings, but singles, boundaries, doubles, maneuvering the field, having you know, money, you know, kind of maneuvering a four ball every over. It's really okay. The quality of bowling probably wasn't good, 
But likewise, but, I mean, it wasn't very yeah. good the other side either. Exactly. I mean, so you're still getting seven, eight, and over, right? So I think that's where he needs to improve. I mean, this is again, Pakistan won the game really well done. But if you have to be critical, you know, when you're chasing 400, you can't be 36 of 41 or whatever he was at one stage. Yeah. That's just just what I think. Um, but overall, look, got over the line. Look, there are a couple of things I wanted to say. One is you touch on Williamson. Yeah. But what is selfless innings, right? At mm-hmm. 95, it's not like, oh, I'm my comeback game. Let me score 100 because I, I won't get another chance in yeah. the World Cup perhaps to do it. No. He yeah. played the game that he was supposed to play. And yeah. that catch, my God, that catch. You know, it's like this guy is fractured, thumb and all, like mm-hmm. nibbling, like he's, you know, just mm-hmm. wobbling a bit on his knee. Like, it was brilliant. Um, yeah. On the self, selfless part, Credit to Fakhar Zaman there. So he did a very unpacked something where he was on 93 and he tonked one of the spinners. I can't remember. I think it was Santner for six they at Cow Corner. Very unpacked something to do to go to 99. <laughs> <laughs> Babur would have taken like 20 balls to get to his 100 and then get gotten out of 100 of 120 balls. Right <laughs> yeah, I know, man. But like I was just talking about the fact that is this park, is this the record chase? Do you still count it as a record chase even no, in DLS or no? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't count as that because you've only got to 200 something, right? So it, statistically, it won't. It won't count. It won't. As so we still hold well. It would still, still us holding yeah, the record. Technically, right? we still hold the 344 um, record. Um, but I think this is the first time a team has scored 400 and lost the game. No, Australia did it first time. Uh, you know, in a, in a World Cup, probably yes. In a World Cup. Sorry, I'm probably yeah. Yeah, 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 we all know the 434. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I'm just talking. Um, yeah. But, but I think the other uh, kind of key point, again, we touched on this earlier, Pakistan, how they kind of changed their approach regarding, you know, based on what the target is. And I think this mindset needs to change, especially for the England game where you will need to win big. I have no faith in Sri Lanka to do anything against New Zealand. <laughs> so you probably need to win by more than 150. And when you're batting first, you need to be in a position where you're 200 for one after 25 overs. If you can do it while chasing, you can do it while batting first. You need to back yourself. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and, and that's how they need to need, need to approach approach that England game because a WW two eighty two ninety you might win like Australia did today against England because England are hopeless, but you're not going to qualify for the semi-finals. And if you want to have yeah. that approach, exactly. you need to go for a four hundred plus score. And let's not forget, England are the defending champions. They were one of the favorites yeah. coming in. They've got a great batting lineup. And knowing how we get all the out of form players in form, but <laughs> going to score a double century against us. But <laughs> no, but, but the point is, which is such a good point, right? For anyone who thought that batting first would have yielded better results, now look, it might have, but the fear was they would have labored their way, maybe mm. not to 80 to 90, Chinnaswamy. 300 to 310 yeah. and it would have been over before you knew it right exactly. so that's the issue you've got the ability it's the issue is intent and the mentality that goes in and my fear is it all this mental this new mentality will yeah. all hinge on one person and that's that is fucker zaman yeah. fucker zaman won't win you every single game right no. what that means is others need to have the same intent now they may not have the same st- clear striking ability and that's fine. I'm not saying don't play your natural game. I don't want Abdullah Shibik trying to hit every ball for six like yeah. Barbara Azim, but strike rotation. Do what you do best. Fine. Hit fours and not sixes. Fine. Yeah. Strike rotation. Singles, doubles. Make up for that, right? But okay, fine. You won't be 225 overs, but you may be 170. You know, I mean, there's, there's something to be said about positive intent, right? You've seen it again, time and again with people like South Africa and all others, right? The only thing stopping, maybe partially quality. I'm not saying that we've got class and Miller and Macro, but a yeah. lot of it is mentality. Yeah, but I mean, look, someone like, like I said, someone like Rachin is the perfect example. He can hit big. He's not a slogger, but the way he just manipulates the field and play, plays the shots, phenomenal, right? I think anybody in this team, okay, they can't probably have that ability, but at least they can follow that template um, in, in that innings. But I feel bad for Ian Smith, though. He said on commentary, oh, if we lose this game, will all the commentators still be there for me? Yeah. <laughs> now, you probably didn't lose the game by the other team chasing down 401, yeah. which would have probably been worse. But my God, it was like, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a robbery of the decade. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you know, 
Yes, Pakistan won, but there will always be an asterisk next next to that victory. Yeah. But hey, it still counts as two points. Still, I'm celebrating. I'm still celebrating. <laughs> exactly. For anyone who thinks that we are haters, we are. You're wearing green. I'm wearing this. We're celebrating. Yeah. The fireworks no. are behind me. Like we're all celebrating. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're very happy. The only other thing is just you know we've obviously a couple of questions we've had on net run rate, right? So let's just keep it very simple for everyone who's wondering. We need Sri Lanka to beat New Zealand. Okay, yeah, that's perhaps that's... the only way. Or if it rains out. Now, I think the probability of that wants... is more. The probability of rain in that New Zealand game actually... is higher than Sri Lanka winning the game. <laughs> Exactly. In fact, they're playing in Bengaluru. It's a day-night game, and it's supposed to be thunderstorm that day. It's five days away, 9th of November, Alama Iqbal Day, and let's hope <laughs> something happens. For anyone who remembers, 9th November was also the same date last year that we beat New Zealand in the semi-final of the T20 World Cup. Right? It's the day after my birthday. I'm hoping that it's going to be good news again. But having said that, um, if the likely scenario happens, just to make it very clear. We need to beat New Zealand by around one hundred and sorry, England by around one hundred and thirty-two runs, assuming that the net run rate doesn't change much between New Zealand and Sri Lanka, right? And if we're chasing, unfortunately, in in this circumstance, the chasing feels even more improbable. Where we need, yeah. if England score three hundred, yeah. assuming no change to the net run rate, New Zealand Sri Lanka, we'll have to chase it down in twenty-eight overs. So it's not looking great because this was a double whammy game. We still won. I was still complaining, as you know, about that yeah. run rate. But when a team concedes 400 and scores 400 yeah. against you, I think that run rate is out of the picture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So there you have it. Fingers crossed. Uh, still some cricket to go. At least the good thing is Pakistan have kept the tournament just alive, which pretty much after Australia's win was dead and buried. The Iran fans will disagree. But uh, still, I think there's some life in the tournament, which and that life will continue till at least Saturday, uh, next Saturday, which is the second last uh, game day. I urge all the fans to watch the game tomorrow, India South Africa, because ho- the winner of that game will play Pakistan in Kolkata in the semi-finals. There you have it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking to all to everyone from India. Watch, I am joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but there you have it. Let us know what you think, and in the comments, uh, any. Suggestions, any tips on on what Pakistan should do? Let us know what you think. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Bye.